Hello everybody, Keeper Joe here again to talk to you about another very interesting animal. We're going to talk to you about today, talk to you today about a very rare and critically endangered amphibian, the Togo Slippery Frog. Now the Togo Slippery Frogs have a very interesting story, especially when it comes to Brookfield Zoo. First off, no other zoo in the entire world has Togo Frogs in their possession. We achieved, we have a acquired these togo frogs in 2016 and they came to us as 25 tadpoles. Now those tadpoles came from Togo, Africa and when we got them we actually had no idea really much about these animals. So we took the two groups that we had received, separated them, set up a tank for them each and we tried to simulate their natural habitat. Where they're from in Togo is actually in areas where there are running water, uh, fast moving streams, waterfalls. So we simulated uh, their habitat to look like that. Now, unfortunately, by the end of 2016, only 11 tadpoles remained, but they had fully metamorphed into adults. Where does that bring us today? So we have currently in our possession have bred through uh, some challenges. We have about 40 adult Togo slippery frogs. We have currently eight froglets, which are that little guy you see there is what we call froglet. He is a fully morphed but young Togo frog. And we also have about 50 plus tadpoles. Now to give you a little idea of how important Togo frogs are, let's talk about their genus significance. So they come from a family called Conrawidae. Now Conrawidae is actually a very ancient family of amphibians. They diverged from fellow amphibians about 70 million years ago. Now you go, well how far is that? The comparison would be these frogs are as related to today's frogs as a whale is related to a horse. It's quite a significant difference. There's six different species in Conrawidae. It actually, Conrawidae contains the Goliath frog, which is a species of frog. It is the largest living frog species in the entire world. It can grow to be about 13 inches long. Now, these Togo slippery frogs were actually thought to be extinct for about 20 years. Recently, in about 2005, there was small groups found in Togo, Africa. Now they were originally found in Ghana, which is just west of Togo, but in those last 20 years, they were not found. So they found a couple in 2005 and 2006, and here we have our came back from the dead amphibians. Now the Togo slippery frog is critically endangered. There's only about 300 in the wild. So a lot of fun things that we found here with them in our care. We found that they have a mating call. It's a high pitched noise, um, almost like a whistle. They do it constantly. We can actually hear it upstairs where, uh, from where they're, found, they're housed in the building. We know a lot of information that no one else in the world really knows. We know that their clutches of eggs are about 100 or so eggs per lay. Now those eggs are really interesting. They're actually white. So it seems strange that an animal would give birth to something that just tells predators everywhere where they are. It's this bright white egg. Now, the eggs hatch in about seven to nine days and out come little itty bitty white tadpoles. It takes about three to six months for limbs to start to develop. As you see in this tank, you'll see three different parts of the tadpole phase. You'll see a tadpole with just the tail. Then you see a tadpole with back legs. And that little guy swimming underneath him, he actually has both front legs and rear legs, but he still has a full tail. Now it's really hard to see, but the guy on top that just has the back legs, his front legs are starting to emerge out of the front. So these guys stay in that stage for probably about six to nine months when they are fully developed into little froglets. Now the breeding age we estimated about one to two years of age and 
we have quite a bit of breeding going on here. One of the interesting things about the breeding that we found is that the males will actually hang out on top of the, on top of the eggs and guard them. Now, besides not wanting other animals to eat their eggs, through multiple different challenges and multiple different uh, egg clutches, we have found that it's very important for the male to sit on top of those eggs. The reason being is as he urinates, he actually reduces the pH in the water around those clutch of eggs, which prevents mold and fungus from growing on those eggs, which inevitably will destroy the eggs. So we found it's very important, important that dad is part of the egg's life. Now we've had our first egg clutch in 2017. We have probably a roughly, I'd say about 200 eggs laid a year, but not all of them make it. There's still a lot of challenges and things we're finding out about these guys. But as far as now, we're making a pretty big impact on this species. Are there any plans to release these frogs back into the wild? Currently, there are no plans to release these animals back into the wild. There are plans once we get more and we're up to normal uh, shipping, we might send some of our tadpoles out to other institutions across the world. How big do they get? How big do they get? Yeah, that full, full grown guy, that's as big as he gets. Now he's larger than most average frogs. Uh, and they are actually very slippery. I know it's kind of fun name, but they are. Trying to grab a hold of these guys is difficult. Do we know what their lifespan is? We do not actually know. From having these guys, the guys that we have had in captivity since they were tadpoles, um, and full-grown adults, we don't. Um, we estimate, according to just the other members of this family, um, that they're probably short-lived, probably no longer than six, seven years. But we'll know in a few years, unfortunately. Uh, but right now, everybody's going strong and healthy. Do they spend most of their time in the water? They do. They spend almost entirety of their time underwater. We do see them out in the morning sitting on the rocks when they're calling to each other. They will hunt crickets on, on land. They'll come out. They also eat worms. And sometimes they will eat fish, but it's not the most enjoyed prey. Um, how did you figure out what to feed them? Trial and error. Uh, we looked at other uh, frog species, especially for the tadpoles. Uh, a lot of tadpoles from other species of frogs, including the other ones in the family, are algae eaters when they're little. Uh, so these guys, we would just put in uh, fish flakes and algae pellets. Uh, that, that you would feed other bottom dwellers, um, and they took right to it. Uh, we did actually find in some tadpoles, if you give them that nice, healthy, uh, nutrient-rich uh, food, it will actually grow up faster. A lot of our guys just feed off of the naturally growing algae in our tanks, which is safe, and they feed themselves right off of that. Now, compared to other frog species, how quick is their life cycle? Um, these guys from, it all depends on the different uh, frog species. There are some frog species that go from egg to tadpole in 24 hours. These guys take, you know, nine days, seven to nine days to hatch. Uh, dark frogs takes uh, sometimes up to two weeks. So these guys are right in the middle of the pack. Um, to go from egg to full grown in a year, it's pretty good. For a large frog, yes. Do they croak? Do they croak? No, they make very few sounds. The only sound we've ever heard them do is that high-pitched whistle. Um, from what we've heard of research and other uh, amphibian experts, they didn't actually think these animals made some sort of call because the uh, uh, membrane in the ear is actually not very visible. And a lot of other, say, toads, uh, you can see that tympanic membrane kind of on the outside. These guys are actually hidden. So they didn't think they used a call to uh, communicate or for a mating uh, ritual. Aside from being slippery, what do they feel like? Um, 
they are very bumpy. As you can see, we'll lift this up and you look right down at him. He does have a lot of bumps. He has that beautiful coloring, that, that pattern. Uh, they're a little bumpy, but mostly they're just uh, very squishy uh, and slippery. So it's, it's, it's hard to keep them in hand long enough to really give them a once over. Can you remind us where they're from? These guys are found in Togo, Africa, uh, in the southern, uh, southwest part of Togo, Africa, right near the Ghana-Togo border. And they have a very small habitat, correct? They have a very small habitat. Yeah, they, it has been reduced by quite a bit. Um, so it, these guys, with no chance of releasing them in the wild as of now, um, and with as very few in the wild, there are research it, researchers, researchers locally in Togo doing, uh, doing work on these guys, but 20, 20 some years, who knows if these guys will be around. And that's kind of why we started this large uh, endeavor to bring these guys to Brookfield Zoo and to start this breeding. We have now set up husbandry, how to breed them, what they need to eat, what their uh, habitat in the zoo is like. So if these guys ever cannot, if these guys can't survive outside of zoos, we can perpetuate this special species in a captive setting. Can people see them when they visit the zoo? Unfortunately, as of now, there is no place to see them. These guys are very elusive. They will hide underneath anything we put in their enclosure. They can fit under very slow rocks. They just squeeze that little body in there. So they will hide. There is talk possibly in the future of setting up something, but that is right now, it's kind of uh, up in the air. Yes, I know firsthand how well they hide. Yes. Every hide. time I try to videotape them, I can't find them. <laughs> yes, they, they uh, are, are very well hidden. So, uh, What are their natural predators? Natural predators um, in the wild will probably be any sort of um, larger uh, lizard, if there are in, in, in Togo. Um, snakes would probably eat these guys. I really can't say to how they taste. Um, uh, but a lot, of, a lot of frogs don't typically taste well enough to be eaten, but these guys could easily probably be eaten uh, by other lizards um, and, and snakes. Probably an occasional, uh, if there is some sort of uh, small predatory mammal, would we'll probably eat these guys too. Even big birds have known to eat uh, frogs, but these guys live in such a remote area, it'd be very hard for most of that stuff to, to get to them. Is there a big physical difference between males and females? Are, is one larger than the other? We, we find that the females are much larger uh, than the, the males, just by the ones that we have uh, seen uh, in our collection that have been in Amplexus, which is their breeding posture. Uh, the male is, on average, just slightly smaller. There are some other methods we haven't quite figured out if they have them, but some amphibians will have different uh, texture, textured areas on their uh, legs uh, that will help hold on to the female during that courtship. Uh, these guys, like I said, are very hard to even keep in hand um, and they're relatively sensitive so we don't do too much hands-on with them. Are they poisonous? Are they poisonous? As far as we know, no, they're not poisonous. Uh, the family that they're part of, I don't believe many of them are. So no, we have, we have not heard anything. So I know you've been working with these animals pretty much from the beginning, right? Yes, just about. Okay. So what's what's your favorite? What's your favorite fact or something that you've discovered about these frogs? Um, that's hard to say. Um, I think my favorite fact was actually finding out how important the male was um, to the survival of the eggs. Um, and we have pictures and I've seen it and they very, they sit diligently just on top of it and they don't move. Um, and we've had clutches where the male gets disturbed, we'll lose the entire clutch. We've had a clutch where the male sat and sat and sat, was very diligent. We had 75 tadpoles. So um, to me, that's just says how important they are 
more so after the, the breeding. And what's it like to be part of this kind of groundbreaking research? It is one of the most, or the most, uh, special moments in my entire career. Um, because in a lot of other animals, that there isn't many animals that you get to be the one that learns firsthand about these guys. And from here on out, Brookfield Zoo will be the sole, uh, you know, sole one in charge of everything that, all the facts that come out uh, of this care for them. That's amazing. So, thank you again um, uh, for sharing this, this moment with me and these special frogs. Um, again, thank you again for uh, supporting the zoo by watching this uh, and any donations uh, we appreciate greatly. So thank you again, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you real soon.